What's up guys and welcome back to another EVE Online video. Um, I am here in, you can see from there, you, I'm out in wormhole space. I'm actually running around in my rattlesnake, which um, probably isn't advisable. But uh, today I want to run the uh, unsecured frontier database. So this is a uh, data site, so a data hacking site that you'll find in wormhole space, specifically in class C3 wormholes. Um, and basically, it's it's, it's quite tough. Um, you, I'm running it in a rattlesnake, uh, which I should be able to do absolutely fine. But I've got a depot and the ability to refit with me. Um, but I'll go all of that in a, a little bit more detail as we go along. Um, uh, well, the reason I want to just get straight into it is I have no cloak, uh, so I don't want to just hang around in a wormhole. I want to get into the site and get going. So first thing to mention, uh, as always, is this is wormhole space. Um, if you're not aware, there is no local. Um, it just doesn't exist. So there could be 100 people in system and I wouldn't know. Um, so you need to be de-scanning constantly um, to make sure you stay as safe as you can. Um, in this case, um, I've been in this system a little while. I'm quite confident, but you never know. And this is an expensive ship. With the extra module I've got on here, it runs nearly two billion at the moment. Oof. More than I was expecting, but that's fine. Okay, so as mentioned, this is a data site, so you've got all the hacking boxes, but also there are a bunch of rats. So I'm going to, on landing, drop my mobile depot and MTU, and lock up the cruisers. Uh, this is because um, the frigates are the trigger in this first wave so you want to leave them till last um, and then I'm just gonna have a quick talk through what we're doing so why do you why would you run these sites so the unsecured frontier database as, as mentioned is a data hacking site in wormhole space specifically in C3 um, but as you can see they are heavily defended there are rats here with um, there's actually four waves within this site the reason you'd run them, A, is to be able to hack the cans. Um, there won't be much value in the cans, uh, so a lot of people leave them behind. But I like to hack them because I do some Tech 3 manufacturing. And these are the locations where you get the ancient relics and the data cores that you can use for Tech 3 manufacturing, basically. They allow you to create the blueprints for Tech 3 stuff. Um, I'll be doing another video on uh, Tech 3 manufacturing fairly soon, but yeah. Um, I'm pulling my drone in because the, the rats have all gone onto it. Um, that's a problem because they've got a lot of webs. So my drone might be in trouble here. So I'm going to try and slow boat towards it as best I can. Um, in fact, I can try and make that easier by just swapping to my prop mod using my mobile depot so I can try and get to him faster because you can see he's suffering and I'm still 10k away from him so let's close that gap, one more burst and then head back towards the mobile depot because you want to stay close to your mobile depot so the prop mod can serve its purpose here but um, that's all it really does um, Right, while that's recovering, I'm going to send up my navy wasps because they've got big shield. Um, anyway, so that that was a sidetrack. Um, we were talking about why you run the site. Uh, the the main reason people run these is the um, blue loot. So when you kill sleeper rats, they have what's known as blue loot, which is the um, basically it's the equivalent of their like bounty you'd get for rats in high sec. Um, but it's a lot, it's worth a lot. So this site is worth 88.4 million in blue loot. That's guaranteed. If you kill every rat, you will get 88.4 million. So, you know, that's that's why you run it. And then you can also salvage the wrecks, um, which allows you to get uh, Tech 3 salvage again. It's specific salvage, um, unique to sleepers, that allows you to do Tech 3 man manufacturing as well. They're the materials you need. So I'm going to slowly drift back to my mobile depot. Um, they've got a lot of webs on me, so I'm moving very slowly. The reason I want to stay close to that is so that I can refit if um, 
damage if damage is too high or too low incoming. I also want to swap my prop mod for the target painter so I can apply things better. Um, you'll see when I landed, I was uh, had my, my micro jump dive drive fit. Um, this is because I r normally run C4 wormhole sights in this, um, where you need to land and then jump to get close enough to the rats. In this case, it's not necessary, so I could have come with the target painter fit straight away. So as we work through the last cruiser. Um, one other thing to mention with wormhole sites and how they function is basically the relic and data sites um, are can be considered sort of like a class above the combat sites in a wormhole. So in a C3 wormhole you can run the regular combat sites like these ones. You can run them in a Praxis or a Tech 3 cruiser or you know even a, I think a Drake or a Drake Navy, if your big blob fit, can run them. Um, but the relic sites and data sites are sort of the equivalent to a C4 combat site. So you can't run them in Tech 3 or in a basic battleship. You have to be in something like a Rattlesnake or a couple of Nesters or you know something else like that. So just worth bearing in mind, if you are in C3s in your practice running sites, like don't just then think, oh, I, that means I can run uh, anything. It doesn't. Um, so then we're moving on to the triggers. This is the end of the first wave. Uh, there is heavy neuting pressure throughout the site. Um, you'll see I've got, we've got, we're getting neutered by the frigates at the moment, which isn't a big deal. But later on, the neuting pressure ramps up heavily. Each wave gets harder. So for this fit, that doesn't matter. We are fully passive fit. But for um, if you're not a full passive fit, you've really got to bear that in mind because um, it could cause you real issues. So in this wave, it's all cruisers, but it's four defenders, four upholders. The defenders are the trigger, but the upholders are the nuke pressure. So it's quite nice that you can take them out first anyway. So let's run out to the upholders. I'm now still not close enough to my mobile depot because I'm being webbed again by the upholders um, and yeah we'll see how we get on um, I went with the co a more conservative version of this fit just FYI um, I would normally have a ballistic control system here to increase my missile out that damage um, but in this case I went more conservative and put a bit more tank in um, the upholders don't last very long, their tank is pretty poor, so you can take them out quickly with just your drones. Um, also, if you want to run the site more quickly and more effectively than I am, use your missiles. Uh, I don't know why I don't use them that much. Um, I'll use them for some cruisers. I use them on all battleships. I use them for some of the cruisers, but primarily rely on my drone. They have swapped damage, swapped over again. So I am going to try and focus on taking out the upholders at, because they web my drone. So he stands, uh, he's moving quite quickly, let's bring him back in. Come on in drone, you're moving at a good speed. 30k though. The drone aggro is real. Um, so we are in danger of losing him and he's a gecko. Uh, we don't want to lose him if we can avoid it. Uh, so I'm going to go back to approaching and do the same thing again. Um, start burning in towards him because we got real issues yeah so after this if, if he survives I'm just gonna throw out my Navy wasps and leave them out um, I prefer using the gecko because the damage application is really nice and he's got the Omni damage um, we should survive he's got decent hull um, but as I say I'm just gonna go with the Navy wasps because they've got huge shield um, head back towards the depot again, throw out the Navy Wasps. Um, but yeah, like if we have a quick look, Navy Wasp is uh, 8,000 shield, whereas the Gecko is. Uh, where's the shield gone? That's still still pretty big, 6,500 six shield with 12,000 hull. That's nice. Um, regular Wasps? Just, just do a comparison. Only 4,000 shield. So the Navy has double the shield of the regular. For not much more money. 
Anyway, let's focus on them again. Um, so yeah, once you've taken out the upholders, uh, then all of the E-War is gone, and you can focus on the defenders who are the trigger. They are more tanky and do more damage. Um, the you can see the nuke pressure though. Um, we are running low on cap, even though we're completely we don't depend on cap at all. It is starting to run down, so we'll push through there. Um, and my intention, by the way, is once we've um, run the site, I am going to come and I'm going to come and hack this. Uh, go and kill that one. Uh, uh, yeah, I am going to come and hack this, and also I'll salvage it. So what we'll do is we'll finish the four waves in this site, um, check out the blue loot just as a proof point, and then I'll skip over me actually salvaging it so you can see the the final amount, and then um, also hacking it. Um, yeah, basically. So let's get through this now. The damage and resist profile is um, fairly uniform, so resist profile is completely uniform, so there's no benefit to using any particular damage type, um, so it doesn't matter what you throw at them. Uh, resist profile, again, you want to be omni, um, so the awakened defenders are almost completely omni. Some of them are favoured more to EM thermal, some of them are favoured more to kinetic explosive. So you need to be completely omni-tanked over the course of uh, each sleeper site. Okay, let's give it this one. While well, we drift back towards our mobile depot. Uh, I'll impulse that once. And then I want to swap to my target painter. Because in the next wave we have our first battleship. We have three more, which is a, an, an upholder, um, so big nuke pressure. We have three more upholder cruisers, so more nuke pressure, and we have three frigates. The battleship will be the trigger though, so we'll just work our way up probably. I'm going to go for the frigates, which web, then into the cruisers, then up to the battleship. And then that will take us through to the final wave where everything is a, is a neuter. So we genuinely might be capped out in this, which again, doesn't matter to me, but it's something you really need to pay attention to if you're running an active fit. Um, it's going to be very important. Alright, let's shove the target painter on there. Um, for now I'm going to up my damage as well. So that's what that what I've just done there if, is... Um, uh, taking out a shield power relay reduces my passive shield regen, but uh, in favour for additional missile damage, which I will use once the battleships are on grid. Um, yes. As you can see, the DPS is pretty strong. Uh, 1140 DPS, which isn't bad, with huge tank. So this, uh, this fit is primarily set up for Pulsar, but... Um, you know, 210,000 EHP currently with a recharge rate of 177, but it goes up. Um, you can swap in more shield power relays if you need more tank, which we'll probably do in the later waves. So let's get through this last one and then take on wave three. Um, just to re remind everyone, I have been hitting D scan throughout. Uh, I, you know, it's mapped to a hotkey. For me, it's V. So you won't see me pressing scan, but um, every now and again you'll see this flash up green, which is me running at D-scan um, to make sure that I don't have company. The other thing uh, just to mention is that one of the reasons I feel relatively safe is I've scouted this wormhole heavily. I know no one lives here. There are no structures. There aren't even any towers in this um, wormhole, so no one lives here. There's an entry from the wormhole I live in, and there's a high sec entry, and that's that's it. Um, the high sec entry is from a relatively unpopulated part of high sec as well, so the chances of someone coming in um, and in something that is capable of killing my rattlesnake is relatively low, so I felt confident enough to go out and run this site. 
but you do need to think about this like because it is quite a lot of risk to risk um, as mentioned it's nearly two billion so you do need to think these things through if you're gonna do stuff in wormhole space you just it's all about reducing the amount of risk you face you'll never remove it there is always risk in wormhole space I mean there's always risk anywhere in Eve but um, you do what you can to reduce that incoming risk uh, to make sure to basically improve your chances of surviving and being able to earn cash. So that's what I've done here. What I, like what I could have done is come in and rolled the high sec entrance as well, um, which would have closed it off until I decided to open it. Um, but that's still not a guarantee because someone could come through uh, the chain from the wormhole I live in and then come in. So decided not to do that. Partly because you have to bring a lot of mass through our own wormhole as well. That's a separate thing. Um, unless you live in wormhole space, you might not know what rolling even is. So I'm not going to go into too much detail there. Um, I will eventually... I have a wormhole workshop uh, series that I'm working on. And also just generally produce a bunch of videos about wormhole space. So if you are more interested, um, go and check those out. Um, I will eventually do a video on rolling wormholes. Uh, in that series but for now if you are interested in other stuff please go and check out my other other videos um, if you're interested in wormhole space generally it's largely what my content is focused on so if you like this then please subscribe and like the video we are how long have we been running 16 minutes we've been in uh, we've been recording for which means we've been in the site for about 15 minutes so far um, as mentioned uh, well, this could go a lot faster if I was using my <laughs> missiles uh, so I will start doing that now because uh, you guys don't want to sit and watch me not use my missiles um, just to mention one of the main reasons I uh, don't cycle my missiles all the time um, is because because I live in wormhole space you just need the opportunity to go and buy them so we need when we have a market uh, run open I go and buy them in bulk but we might not open we might not open a route to a market for like a week or so and so um, I don't want to just burn through all my missiles and then not be able to use them because um, you do get through them quite quickly uh, if you use them all the time so that's that's the primary reason to be honest um, I don't want to just burn through my supply unnecessarily, especially as they are particularly useful when it comes to wormhole defense and things. Because um, at that point, you know, if you're running PvP, you need as much DPS as you can possibly put together. So you can see the incoming uh, new pressure from the sleepless upholder is really taking hold now. Um, all that will really do for me is turn off my target painter. Um, missile systems don't require capacitor and obviously none of my tank requires capacitor but even still so I shouldn't have any uh, yeah and I oh, actually these things are negative on your capacitor I think as well uh, okay that's your capacitor recharge rate bonus reduced by 35 percent because it draws power from the capacitor. I like the modules and how they've thought them through and stuff. It's uh, A lot of it makes sense. If you're going to increase the recharge of your shields, like where is that power coming from? It has to come from somewhere, so in this case it comes from the capacitor. And that makes sense for a, a passive fit, right? Um, you'll need, you need shield re uh, increasing your passive recharge rate is good for a passive tank. Um, and it's unnecessary in an active tank because you're going to be boosting so you don't need your capacitor that's the thinking right this wave is the final wave so it doesn't matter what order you kill things so I am probably just going to work my way up like I did before but that will depend a bit on the tank um, now that is what I'm going to do because I, I want to get rid of anything that's going to aggro my drones uh, but the tank will struggle here. I will need to swap my uh, tank out a bit to make sure I get additional regen. So when I drop to maybe 35% perhaps, I'll chuck in more shield power relays.
but these are all newting as well so final wave everything newts the frigates newt the cruisers again and the um battleships and there's two battleships this time so the incoming dps is real as well as the incoming new pressure um the naming convention of the ships uh tells you what they do basically so um the upholders are the main new pressure ships the um, preservers do um, remote reps so that's why one of the reasons you take out the frigates is they remote rep everything uh, if they're a preserver so yeah there's the things like that defenders are just damage and tank they have no some of them have webs but that's that's it um, I'm actually going to swap two of them to make sure we don't drop below the uh, below the threshold. And you see straight away, just by, we were at 177 HP a second. Now swapping two out, we're at 315 HP a second. Um, but our DPS has dropped considerably. But we don't have to stay down there for very long. We're about to be capped out. So our target paint will stop. But once we take out a couple of the cruisers, basically, we should be able to swap <clears throat> one of the shield re power relays back out because you'll see our shield regen nice and quick. So, the capacitor there we go. Built. There's the end of the capacitor, so my target painter can't run anymore. But let's have a quick check of the upholder's damage type. Uh, there you go. So they're heavily favored in EM and thermal. For the battleships, the at least. Uh, what about the cruisers? Also heavily favoured EM thermal, but still Omni. And the damage you want to do is Omni across the board. So here goes the last awakened up holder. Um, our shield is holding fine at this point. What you want to try and do is avoid dropping below 30, because at that point the rate of passive regen drops off considerably but if we go and if we pop up above 40% I'll swap um, one of my uh, drone damage amplifier back in but you can see they hit hard and consistently so this is a there's just two ships and there's quite a high amount of DPS coming in constantly because um, they use two different weapon systems so you'll see them hitting me with lasers and then every now and again a missile hits and does bigger damage but the nice thing is they're the upholders so they die quite quickly sleepers don't have any shield just as an interesting thing to mention uh, I don't know enough about their lore to comment on why that might be but yeah they are only armor and hull um, and their hull has no resists so they melt quickly once you get through their armor you'll see this on this upholder considering it's a battleship and how long it's taking us to get through the armor um, once we get through that the hull will more or less just disappear even without missile damage because I'm about to have to reload a module has run out of charges. so just from our drones now we're through the armor. And there we go, chunking it down. That's a big hit, 1779. There we go, there goes the armor. So let's send them over there. I'm gonna swap this just to speed things up, and probably this one as well to get through this last one. But as mentioned, so we will get 88.4 million in blue loot for this. And we've been running now for 24 minutes. So by the time we finish the site, it'll be tw yeah, 23, 24 minutes. Because I've been recording for 24. Um, <clears throat> it could be run faster if you cycle your missiles more often. That's already been mentioned. Um, so 88.4 million for 23 minutes. Then there's obviously the salvage, and I would expect to get around 10 million uh, value in salvage. And then the cans, which is a bit random to be honest, like um, 
we could pull almost nothing from this we could pull like one or two million or there could be an item that's worth 100 million on its own they're pretty rare hence they're being worth 100 million but it's possible so but i will show you all of that at the end as well end of the video so the other thing i like to do before leaving the sites uh, while i wait for the last wreck to be pulled in is just refit to the to what i need to start another combat site which looks like this if i'm in a pulsar um if i'm not in a pulsar i would probably swap that to the shield power relay which i did at the start of this one by the way if you the fit is included down in the um description a link to an eve workbench uh, but also if you are interested in more detail about the fit um, I go into more detail in another video which I will link here so please go and check that out um, but yeah you can just sit, find the bench find the fit on Eve workbench in the description below so as the last rat comes in we will scoop our mobile depot we will wait for this still confident nothing's coming in the site stays um, so it's this one, PUS, uh, the Unsecured Frontier Database. It stays even when you cleared the wrecks. Um, but just in case, I like to bookmark um, the location so that I can come back and get my wreck, get the wrecks. So what do we got? 88.4 million, as promised. And this is what blue. This is just blue loot. You can't do anything with it. You just take it to an NPC station and sell it because it so literally just functions as the bounty, um, but a nice amount of bounty for it. So we'll loot that, we'll scoop that, and I'm going to go and reship and come back uh, to salvage and then to hack. See you all in a second. Okay, so that's the salvaging done. Um, on this occasion, I overestimated a little bit. We got just under 4 million in salvage. So, the things you, like basically all of this is used for Tech 3 manufacturing. So, which is why if you haven't salvaged sleepers before, you might not have seen it or know what it is. Um, it's literally all it's used for, just goes into these things, which are used again entirely for Tech 3 manufacturing but I would be doing a much longer more detailed video on that so now I'm gonna head home and swap to my hacking ship to come back and do these total so 88.4 plus 4 million here currently puts us at 92.4 million the other thing to mention from tech 3 salvage you get a reinforced metal scraps um, these are a surprisingly good source of tritanium um, so you reprocess these and you get tritanium out of them and not a bad amount um, which is really useful for wormhole space because you can't mine any asteroids with tritanium you can't you can't get it here so by salvaging tech 3 uh, salvaging sleepers you get reinforced metal scraps which you can reprocess into tritanium so just useful for some manufacturing um, if you need other ships so yeah see you in a second once I'm hacking Okay, and now I'm warping back in in my buzzard, so I do a little bit of data hacking. Um, so as mentioned, these cans might not be uh, particularly lucrative, but we will see. Um, what you can do, of course, is if you have a cargo scanner fit, you can just lock them all up, scan down which ones you think are worth hacking, and then go hack them. Um, in this case, I'm not going to do that. A, I don't have a cargo scanner, and B, um, we want to know what value we can get out of the whole site in this occasion. Plus, as mentioned, I use the materials for Tech 3 manufacturing and invention. So I need them all anyway. The hacks are easy. Um, generally speaking, like I think if you move up the classes of wormhole, they get a little bit harder. But even then, I don't think they ever become red hacks. So we'll just try and blitz through and get through as many as we can so 
that was a data core but it's probably it goes defensive subsystems it's specifically for tech 3 manufacturing what we're hoping for from these sites um, is of course the money is in finding some of these ancient relics in them um, but that's definitely not guaranteed by any stretch but we're gonna go through as fast as we can there we go uh, so I'm gonna do this um, more data cores that's core subsystems so more tech 3 um, I will hack them all and then we'll go through what we found at the end probably probably not that much but we'll see so see you again in a second before I go actually um, the ancient relics are quite big uh, so it's possible uh, if you get lucky and come across a few ancient relics it's possible that you won't have enough cargo space in a small hacking frigate um, that's a bit annoying when that happens so then you can either pick and choose what you want to take or you come back and you know hack them again afterwards um, there won't be a problem in these I don't think there's ever really enough in the C3s to worry about it but when you move up into the C4, 5s and 6s um, then it then it can be an issue because there's loads of cans and the chances of ancient relics is much higher but anyway um, I'll finish this off and we'll go through the loop at the end and that's all of them so really nothing worth talking about a um, couple of needle jack filaments which is obviously fine uh, don't we could use them if we um, want to go on a Nultec roam. Um, otherwise, just the Tech 3 data cores um, and a, a calm filament for um, Triglavian space. So, yeah, nothing worth mentioning at all. Um, so, overall, this site was worth 92 million ISK, 93 million ISK, with the blue loot salvage and the negligible bit of stuff here. Um, the whole thing, uh, including swapping ships and hacking and salvaging, has taken me 45 minutes. Um, which, obviously, so you wouldn't do this unless you want these items. You wouldn't do it, they're worth virtually nothing. Um, so you probably wouldn't hack. So if you wanted to, like, stack cash, you'd just run the rats. And you could run three of these sites in an hour, netting you about 250 million. Um, which is good, obviously, but you need a rattlesnake um, or equivalent to run it. But yeah, basically that's the site. So I'm going to remove my bookmarks so that we don't get confused. The site will have despawned now. Uh, get rid of MTU. And then uh, that's it. By the way, uh, I've got a nice skin on, which you might have seen briefly. Uh, if anyone's interested in this skin, it's the um, scopes indication one this is specifically the one from last year um, for the buzzard I think this is uh, I won this in a giveaway um, so I think it's only possible um, f via giveaways for um, from Eve partners so it's, it's the special skins that Eve members of the Eve partner program get to run giveaways um, I got this from Eve workbench so when you submit a, um, a fit onto Eve workbench you get to enter a giveaway and I was fortunate enough to win. Um, I quite like it, I think it looks good. Uh, let's just kill my cloak a second so we can see it on the ship. Also, I love the cloak and decloaking animations. Uh, this side is fully in shadow, of course, but this side, I quite like it. I like the gold trim everywhere. The blue's nice. Um, how does it rank against Glacial Drift? For me, it's better. Can I clean ship out here? No, you have to be docked. Uh, but I do like the versus Red Force, which is what I was flying before. Um, but for the time being, I'm going to be flying around with my scopes indication. That's, that's also nice. Plus, it must be a bit rarer. So, yeah, um, that's it. Uh, thanks very much for watching, guys. If you did enjoy it, uh, please hit that like button. It makes a big difference to the channel. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more wormhole content. I will be doing... Um, as mentioned, I will be doing a whole bunch of stuff, um, 
the big project for me coming up is going to be a, a video and then a collection of videos around it on Tengu manufacturing and the subsystems. This plays a part in that because of the data cores. Um, but yes, so if you did enjoy that, then please uh, like and subscribe. Um, and I will see you all in the next one. Cheers.